three days then they are attacking you know these three days giving them chance just to clean everything even carpets as our sources told us in Tripoli you know so if such a mistake happened it's not mistake you know Police in Cheshire are questioning a man on suspicion of murder after an angler was allegedly pushed into a canal during a fishing competition. Officers were called to Sankey Valley Park in Warrington yesterday morning, where the body of 57-year-old Harry Morris was recovered from the water. Lawyers have given the Church of England new advice to clarify that openly gay clergy should be allowed to become bishops. But the guidance is thought to also say that gay clergy should be made to clarify that they're not in an active sexual relationship. David Cameron is facing criticism over his call to stigmatise fathers who abandon their families. The Prime Minister said he wanted Britain to be a genuinely hostile place for fathers who don't support their children. Writing in the Sunday Telegraph on Father's Day, he said it wasn't acceptable for single mothers to be left to bring up children on their own. Bob Gregg from the single parenting website Only Dads says it's not just a question of fathers abandoning their responsibilities. His argument is just too simplistic. Um, th there are many cultural, employment, financial related, predominantly legal issues as well, which, which prevent dads actually having um, a full-on relationship with their children post-separation and divorce. Um, why that isn't recognised in in his article in the Telegraph, I just, I just don't know. A six-year-old has died after he was knocked down by a hit-and-run driver in West Yorkshire. The accident happened in Wakefield yesterday lunchtime. Tributes have been paid to the peace campaigner Brian Hoare, who's died at the age of 62. Mr Hoare camped for ten years in Parliament Square to protest against British and American foreign policy. A spokesman for the Stop the War Coalition said his death was a tragic loss. And a look at the weather forecast. Any showers will ease during the evening to leave most areas dry, but rather chilly overnight. Patchy rain will spread from southwestern areas tomorrow morning and will affect most areas. BBC News at three minutes past five, our next at six. BBC Radio 2. And Bobby Pryor has the travel news. Tom, thank you. First of all, to the M1, there was a vehicle fire between junctions 29 and 29A, so south of Chesterfield towards Markham Vale. The good news is oh, it's all cleared out of the way and lanes are open and traffic is on the move. To Southport, the A565, that was closed following an accident between Liverpool Avenue Station Road Junction and the end of the A565. That's now all cleared so you can get through there and most of the queues have gone as well. The M1 further down southbound, it's the usual Sunday queues through junction 11 for Dunstable. It's around two miles of slow moving traffic through through that junction. The M4 eastbound again, Sunday traffic, junctions 3 to 2, Heston to Brentford, very, very slow. The M25 clockwise between junctions 15 and 16, the M4 and the M40 is heavy. If you're coming up from Kent on the M26 and heading clockwise through junction 5, you're going to find some heavy traffic, but again, that's just the amount of traffic with the motorways merge. And the M25 clockwise junctions 9 to 10 at the moment between Leatherhead and the A3 through the roadworks is heavy. Finally, to Somerset at Road, the A361, the Frome Road. Now, that's partially blocked still following an earlier accident at the Church Lane Junction. You can get through. There's not huge queues, but just take care on that approach. And thank you for your updates. We'll be back now, just after six. Online, on digital, and on 88 and 91 FM. Jodie Prenger holds the fort for Paul O'Grady on BBC Radio 2. They cheated you like a dog And you were the one Who had made it so clear All those years ago Talking off I had to give They don't act with my jealousy
a great song to set things off. That was George Harrison and hit from 1981, the appropriately titled All Those Years Ago. Afternoon, everyone. I'm Jody Prenger in again for the wonderful Paul O'Grady. Now, never fear, he's back next week. Now, until then, I've plenty to keep us busy between now and seven on Father's Day. Yes, happy Father's Day, everyone. Including some terrific music from the Pierces and Tony Christie, plus Paul's famous triples and plenty of your messages. But first, he's a true modern girl. just a swaying click and if you weren't swaying and clicking something's wrong that was one of Sheena Easton's big hits from her 1980s 9 to 5 which took her to America where it reached number 1 now in America a little fact here for you it was called Morning Train because at the same time Dolly Parton had of course 9 to 5 well now as Paul always says thank you for all your emails and letters this past week do keep them coming in even while he's away his address is Paul O'Grady, BBC Radio 2 W1A 1AA, or email Paul anytime, Paul O'Grady, or one word, at bbc.co.uk. And of course, we've got all the mod cons here. No smoke signals needed because today, yes, you can text me 88 to 921. Yes, that's 88291. Only if it's safe to do so. And texts are charged at your standard message rate. So if you'd like to mention, have a mention, or like a Father's Day message, get Get in touch. I'd love to hear what you're up to, even if you are only baking a sponge cake. Now, a song for Betty. And thanks for your letter, Betty. I got a letter from the mailman yesterday. It came from Betty and was postmarked far away. Inside. I read that letter and I cried. She said, Dear Bobby, just a line to say hello. We've been so 
such good friends you should be the first to know I fell in love my dreams have all come true and Bobby he's so much like you he swept me off my feet I never thought I'd meet someone else who'd be so good to me Someday you'll find someone to love you true You'll fall in love and then you'll feel just like I do So long for now, write me soon goodbye I read that letter and I Bobby V and his 1963 hit, A Letter from Betty, and that was for Betty. How many times have I just said Betty? <laughs> oh, and speaking of letters, let's have a few of yours. The first message we've got up here, hi Jodie, I'm normally travelling from Oxford up to Liverpool on a Sunday evening and always listen to the Paul show. Last week was a complete nightmare, nightmare not because you were on instead of Paul. <laughs> you had me worried for a moment then. But because I'd only been going for half an hour and my car conked out and I was stranded for three hours. Oh, goodness. I just wanted to say a big thank you for keeping me company while I waited to be towed to a local garage. I hope you enjoyed your birthday. All the best, Mark. I was going to say you could have called me or would have picked you up, but I was busy. I hope your car's fixed. Hey, we've got another message here. Hi, Jodie. As always, it's a pleasure listening to you while covering for Mr O'Grady. You make me smile. Are you sure that's not just wind? <laughs> Anyway, all my jokes don't get any better. Please say hello to my wife, Gillian, who has her, has her nose stuck in a word puzzle while I get the dinner on. Love, Chris Dipclock from Cleethorpes. What are you cooking? And we've got another message here. Hello, Jodie. Well, 2011 is a year of celebrations for me and my husband, John. Oh, really? Why? We are clocking up 40 years of marriage. Oh, you don't get that for murder. And I'm going to be 60 years young. And to celebrate, my daughter Lucy is coming over from New Zealand with our two grandsons, Jack and Cody. Oh, wow. Now that is something to celebrate, isn't it? Please thank Paul for a great show, which I enjoy listening to, or getting the Sunday tea ready. That's when I'm not partying. Love from Mo Moira Abbey. Oh, have a lovely time with your family. Oh, we've just got time for a quick text before we move on. Hi, would you do a shout-out to my daddy, Graham? He's the best daddy in the whole entire world and does such a lot for me. And that's from Lydia Blythe. Oh, happy Father's Day to you there. Now, more messages later but now a track from the new album by the pierces that album is called you and i and this is kissing you goodbye
The Pierces are Catherine and Alison, and that song, Kissing You Goodbye, is from their album, You and I. Now, Paul's left me with the keys to his TARDIS. Have you heard the saying, they've been left in safe hands? <laughs> right, so, let's hop inside and time travel. But, which year are we heading to? Oh, goodness, look at the dust in here. It will put Kim and Aggie to shame. Right, OK, here's your clues. The last debutante was formally presented to the Queen. The first life peerage was created and the H.E. Bates publishing The Darling Buds of May. Any ideas? Well, it was 1958 and it was also the year Connie Francis had a hit with this classic. Stupid Cupid, you're a real mean guy. I'd like to clip your way so you can fly. dance around your kitchen table to that one can't you from our mystery year of 1958 that was connie francis and stupid cupid we've got time for a quick text it says hi jody coming back from Haley island with anna andrew and my dad would you say happy father's day to him and he's the best dad in the world please read it out thank you i just did and that's from katie now do keep your messages coming in you can text me and whoever's still blowing smoke signals outside i can't read that quick thank you very much <laughs> so we'll have more of your marvelous music this Sunday afternoon after a word from your BBC. Wednesday, June 22nd, it's going to be a very special day. Why? Because it's going to be two day. It's the very best of Radio 2. It's been brought together for just 12 amazing hours of broadcasting. There's comedy, lively chat, music, special guests, live performances. To see the, the full lineup, line tune in or go online. Two day, all of Radio 2 in one day. Begins Wednesday morning from 7, here on BBC Radio 2. Jodie Prenger, in for Paul O'Grady.
was two times dancing around your kitchen table. That was this week's offering of our Jules Jewel slot. That was tricky to say last Sunday and it's not much easier today. That was Sixth Avenue Express from Jules Holland and his Rhythm and Blues Orchestra. I loved it, that song. Well, I'm Jodie in for Paul O'Grady, who's off enjoying a well-earned break and he will be back with you next Sunday. So do keep your Father Day messages coming in. You can email the show Paul O'Grady at bbc.co.uk or you can text me on 88 to 91 only if it's safe to do so well we've got some of your texts coming in here dear jody i always listen to paul and i'm enjoying your standings oh thank you very much um i tried to get a mention from my darling husband michael in steve wright's father's day show this morning but without any luck so could you mention michael hart this evening of course i've just i've just done it now thank you and that's from alexis hart in mainstone have a lovely father's day we've got another one could you say happy father's day to my dad richard who's playing taxi for me and my sister oh don't they all dads are the best taxi drivers ever love and that's love from kerry and please could you wish our daddy Stuart gray a happy father's day as he's not long returned from being in afghanistan for seven months and we are so proud of him oh i bet you're glad to have him back as well and that's from amy and molly and say hello to my dad carl who's been so oh, get this surfing all day in bantham and down in devon it was five foot high and wild oh gosh i hope you brought your hairspray he's the coolest dad in the world and that's from yasmin and jack and peter in suffolk this claire says she loves you loads well more messages later as it's gone five here's today's five o'clock triple and this has been requested by phil slade in finsbury park now today's five o'clock is alan partridge aha
sound of sleep And she's sweeter now than the wildest dream Could have seen her And I watch her slipping away But I know I'll be hunting high and low High and low There's no end to the lanes I'll go to Hunting high
I'm cringing through that All Star Triple after my Alan Partridge impression. I can't do impressions and I can't tell jokes. Let's move on. Right, that was our first All Star Triple today. And that was, I'm not going to do it. Aha! Oh, I did it again. And that was Take On Me, Hunting High and Low. And we rounded it off with The Sun Always Shines on TV. And I never get that because when the sun does, you have to shut the kitchen. The c- shut the kitchen! Shut the curtains! I put my teeth in and start again. And I'll have another All Star Triple after six. Now we've got time. Oh, you've been texting in some lovely Father's Day messages here. We've got one. Could you say hello to my dad, Keith, after I nearly forgot about Father's Day this morning? And he's a fab dad, so he did forgive me really easily. And that's from Chloe in Herodford. And also, Jodie, can you wish our daddy a happy Father's Day and tell him that we love him very much? And that's thanks from Maddie and Phoebe. Hello, please, could you say a huge happy Father's Day to my daddy, Kevin? I love him more than he realises. I love that. Love you, daddy, from your prince. Says Hanny, currently on the road to Nuneaton. Thank you. And uh, we've got one last one here. Hi, Jodie. I really love it when you sit in for Paul. Oh, thank you. It really brightens up my Sundays. It's my 17th birthday on Monday, and I'm really excited. Could you please play me a record? Anything of your choice will do. It would really make my day. Thanks, Jodie, and hope you all. And that's from Laura Jane. Of course, I will. Not a problem. Well, I'm Jodie, and I'm in for Paul. And now it's time for our lost TV theme. <laughs> That's Malcolm with his horn again. Anyway, today's choice was a British action adventure series from producer Jerry Thunderbirds Anderson. Now, this show starred actors, though. Don't jump the gun, it's not puppets. And was first on your screens in 1972 and 1973. It was an ITC series from Lou Grade Studio and starred Robert Vaughan, um, Nairi Dawn Porter, sorry, I always get that wrong, and and Tony Anholt. Any ideas? Well, today's Lost TV theme for Maureen in Cambridge is The Protectors.
composed by John Cameron, and that was, I love his voice, Tony Christie and Aaron News and Alleyways, the song version of the week, Lost TV show, The Protectors. Now, do you have a Lost TV theme that, well, if you do and you want to get in touch and we can see if you can find it for you, all you need to do is email paulogrady at bbc.co.uk. Well, we've got Tay, you've been texting in loads, that's brilliant. Oh, there's lots of fathers need loving out there. We've got one here, hi, oh, 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 hi, my daddy has been picking fruit all day in a sumo suit for charity where's he been keeping his fruit i would like to wish him happy father's day as he is the coolest daddy ever and that's from Maisie cooper we've got another one here please say happy father's day to our dad keith who is running the yorkshire three peaks for charity oh well done and that's from hannah and liam and hello please say hi and a happy father's day to my dad as i have dragged him around university open days all weekend that's what dads are for and that's thank you from alice now on the way home to the m6 well I'm Jodie Prenger in for Paul and I'll be back after this important message. Listening to BBC Radio online is simple. Because all of the BBC's radio stations are available on your computer. In one easy to use player. You can personalise it by saving your preferred stations. Making switching. Between them easy. And you can add BBC programmes to your favourites. So episodes from the last seven days. will be waiting for you. In one place. Good morning my friends. Tremendous to be back on your radio. Hey hey it's Radio 2 rocking it. With the new radio player you can listen online to all the BBC. BBC Radio you love. Go to the BBC Radio 2 website and click. Well, let's have a few more of your messages, So, but do keep them coming in. You can email in paulogrady at bbc.co.uk or you can, yes, no smoke signals. I always say you can text me on 88 to 91 only if it's safe to do so and texts are charged at your standard message rate. We've got one here. Hi, Jodie. Please could you wish my dad, Reg Wesley, a happy Father's Day and lots of love from Caroline. Please say happy Father's Father's Day to my husband, John. Love you lots from daughters Kaylee and Megan. P.S. Love the show. I'm glad you're enjoying it. We've got another one here. Hi, Jodie. Listen to your show all the time. I would like to thank my dad, Chris, for being a great dad and wish him a happy Father's Day. And that's from Joanne Blythe. And we've got one more here. Uh, can I wish my dad a very happy Father's Day as I went out to play golf with a friend and left him? He's still waiting for me to go and take him out for Father's Day. Well, put your clubs away and take him out for dinner. More text later. After darts. <laughs>
was the boy from New York City by darts. I haven't heard that in years. Time for some more of your messages now. And now this came addressed to Paul. Um, hello, I love the hours between five and seven on Sunday on BBC Radio 2. I enjoy the mixture of random letters and random music. And it's like eating a box of chocolates when blindfolded. You never know what's coming next. Well, I've never heard a true word. <laughs> the reason for writing this letter was to ask you to wish my lovely wife Hazel a happy birthday for June the 19th. I shan't mention her age, but let's say it comes between 50 and 60. Please tell Hazel she's my rock and I love her more and more every day. And that's from Roger in Swansea. Oh, have a lovely, lovely birthday. Oh, we've got a dead pet. Dear Jodie, I don't want to make you cry. Well, you've started, haven't you? But I've written to tell you about our gorgeous Labrador Goldie, who was so cruelly taken from us two weeks ago. I'd taken Goldie to the local park, like I've done pretty much every day for the last seven years. We had just left, um, just left after spending some time playing fetch with a tennis ball, and I was just attaching to to lead Goldie's collar, and someone had left the gate open. From out of nowhere, someone else's ten tennis ball flew out of the park into the main road, and Goldie in in instinctively went for it. The driver who hit Goldie was in tears. I know it was an accident, but I'm missing Goldie terribly. Please mention her on Paul's show. Thanks, Jodie, and that's Jenny in North London. I am so sorry about that, and sending you all the very best to love. Oh, gosh, I can't, I can't. I need my tissues. Are we time, time for a lost film catch-up? <laughs> Right, I've done my tissues. OK, last week, Alison Reid from Whitby asked us to help her find a lost film, which told the story of a friendship between a weird writer, stroke journalist, and a daredevil brainstorming pilot. <laughs> Sounds interesting, doesn't it? She said it was a real melodrama and she wasn't wrong. I can now reveal, Alison, that the film was The Tarnished Angels, directed by Douglas Sirk and starred Rock Hudson, Robert Stack and Dorothy Malone. And thanks to everybody who bothered to email in, including Chris in Tipton, Nigel in Stockton, Jen and Pete in Barrow, uh, Shane in Edmonton and Sarah in Bolton and everyone else, thank you so much. Now, if, if you've got a lost film, do let us know and we'll do our best to find it for you. Now, more messages after six. And to take us there, here's Sheila, Helen and Valerie. <laughs>
much, much more to come after six, so don't go anywhere. I'm Jodie Prenger, in for Paul O'Grady, and this is BBC Radio 2. Online, on digital, and on 88 to 91 FM. <laughs> Easy news at six o'clock. This is Tom Sanders. Syrian opposition forces have created a national council to try to overthrow President Bashar al-Assad's regime. The dissidents said they wanted to lead the Syrian revolution and were made up of activists inside and outside Syria. NATO is looking into claims that a number of civilians were killed by one of its airstrikes in the Libyan capital Tripoli last night. Libyan authorities have taken Western journalists to a hospital and shown them the bodies of people they claim died in the attack. The Conservative MP Richard Ottaway, who chairs the Foreign Affairs Select Committee, says it's too early to judge what happens. NATO's got a pretty good record here. I mean, I had several thousand strike sorties have been carried out over Libya in recent months. And this, I, as far as I'm aware, is the first time there's been any casualties. I personally would like to see some verification of this claim by the Libyan government. Colonel Gaddafi has got form of exaggerating civilian losses. Um, but nonetheless, if it is a genuine uh, incident, then obviously it's very sad and very regrettable. The government has insisted that there is still a huge amount of room for dialogue over the reform of public sector pensions. Earlier, the Shadow Chancellor Ed Balls had accused ministers of seeking confrontation by announcing changes before finishing talks with the unions. A pilot has been taken to hospital with serious head injuries after a helicopter crashed in Somerset. The helicopter came down in a field near Glastonbury. No one else was hurt. The Church of England is being advised it cannot bar clergy who are openly gay from becoming bishops, if they're celibate. Lawyers have drawn up guidelines which clarify that blocking a candidate on the basis of their sexuality is discriminatory. The head of the evangelical group, Reform, the Reverend Rod Thomas, fears there, fears there won't be checks on celibacy. Christina Rees, who's a senior synod member, says the point is controversial. People like Rod Thomas already think that the church has gone too far and that there should be much more rigor applied, while many others in the church find it incredibly distasteful that just because someone is known to be same-sex oriented and in a partnered relationship, that that means that the church still is able to question them about their current sex life and their past sex life. London Underground says a strike by tube drivers, which begins later this evening, will have very little impact on services. Members of the RMT union will walk out for six hours from nine o'clock tonight in process to the sacking of a driver who is claiming unfair dismissal. Lifeboat crews in Northumberland are perplexed by the number of tourists who ignore warnings and try to dive across a tidal causeway. The RNLI at Seahouses, south of Berwick-upon-Tweed, have had to carry out eight rescue missions to reach stranded visitors. And the weather forecast, any showers will ease during the evening to leave most areas dry but rather chilly overnight. Patchy rain will spread from southwestern areas tomorrow morning and will affect most areas. BBC News at three minutes past six, our next to seven. BBC Radio 2 and here's Bobby with the latest travel news. Tom, thank you. First of all, to Edinburgh, to the M8 eastbound. There are delays on the eastbound side before Junction 1 for Hermiston Gate following an accident where two lanes have been closed. To the M62 eastbound between junctions 11 and 12, so Birchwood to the M60 in the roadworks. We've got very, very slow traffic, and I think it is just the roadworks. There were reports earlier of maybe a breakdown or a minor bump, but that cleared fairly quickly, so maybe just residual delays from that. The A1 southbound at Water Newton, so just west of Peterborough, partially blocked. There's been an accident at the old Great North Road junction. It's just one vehicle, but there's slow traffic past the scene. M1 southbound, usual Sunday night queues, junction 11 for Dunstable, just through that junction for about two miles still. M4 eastbound, if you're heading in towards London, still heavy, junctions 3 to 2, Heston to Brentford. And the M25, again, usual queues, clockwise between junctions 15, the M4, through to the M40 at junction 16. Also clockwise behind that between junctions 9 and 10, another head to Wisley. You're going to find it a little bit slow. And finally, to the A31 eastbound at Wimborne Minster, there's a broken down vehicle just between Lakes Gate and the Merely Roundabout, which is the A341, so traffic is slow on the approach. And thank you for your updates. Back now, just after seven. Online, 
on digital and on 88 to 91 FM. Jody Prenger in for Paul O'Grady on BBC Radio 2. Thanks, Bobby and Tom, for the news and travel. I'm Jody Prenger. I'm back holding the fort for the lovely Paul O'Grady. And a big happy Father's Day to dads everywhere. Now make sure you keep your messages coming in. Well, let's kick off this, my second hour, with this Carly classic from the 80s. Carly. I'm Jody in for Paul and I'll tell you why. Get it? Oh, I told you. I can't do jokes, can I? Well, he's still playing with Winston the Lammy is. Oh, there. Oh, I love that sound. Now, I've got to say, I've kept my eye out for Elsie, but she's nowhere to be seen. I'm, I'm going to start taking it personally. And talking about personally, if you are watching on the webcam, I am wearing a top, but the white part of my top, it looks like, well, as my nan always says, if it's not for sale, don't put it in the shop window. Anyway, it's lovely to be here. Nan, do keep your messages coming in. You can email the show at paulogrady at bbc.co.uk or you can text me on 88 to 91. Yes, that's 88291. Only if it's safe to do so and texts are charged at your standard message rate. Lots more to come at before seven, including your thank yous and music from Teddy Thompson and the Beatles. But before all that, I do get a little bit excited. Here's the great Bette Midler. From a distance, the world looks blue and green, and the snow-capped mountains white. From a distance, the ocean meets the stream, and the eagle takes to flight. It's the voice of hope 
That brings back good memories because with that song, I won Blackpool's talent search at Stanley Road Workmen's Club and I won £500. Yes, the bingo tickets were on me. <laughs> what a great song. And that was written in 1985 by an American singer-songwriter, Julie Gold and Betty. I oh, love Bette Midler. Had a worldwide hit with it in 1991. Right, come on, let's have some more of your messages. Oh, I've come all of a flutter. You've just made me look at the webcam. You're stunning. That's for Jodie and not Paul. Ah, oh, Paul's beautiful as well. In case the email has a delay and that's from Stu. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious me. Oh, we've got another Father's Day message here. Um, my dad loves your show. Happy Father's Day to my dad, Mick. He is the best dad ever. And that's from Lisa Ellum. We've got another Father's Day message here. Um, my daddy is going around the city dressed as Mary Poppins to raise money for his charity. I am proud of him and wishing luck. And that's from Emma Wally. Well, make sure you give him a spoonful of sugar when he's back. More messages here. My dad doesn't really do Father's Day, so can you wish it to... What? What's wrong? Why? It's Father's Day. Can you wish it to him for me, please? Happy Father's Day, Dad. I love you. And that's from Amy. Please wish my amazing dad, Andy, a happy Father's Day. He's 
driving all the way from Bournemouth to Scotland and then to Northern Ireland to take me home from uni. Now, that's what I call a taxi ride. What a hero, and that's thanks from Dan. Uh, dear Jodie, please could you mention Teddy while you're sitting in for today, Paul O'Grady. We always listen to it, and it would be great if you could mention Teddy. I think you have Yorkies. Yeah, you're right, I've got three. Teddy was a Yorkie, and I can still see his little face with a little red ribbon holding the hair from his eyes. Oh, Malcolm, it's a dead pet! Oh, I said, oh, I can't. Sadly, he died last Thursday. Oh, bless him, he had a tumour. And we had to take the brave decision to have him <laughs> to put to sleep. Please, could you mention Teddy today? And that's thanks so much to Martha and Mavis and Hove. Oh, see, I just... Oh, I'm so sorry. But do you know what? The great thing is he had the best life ever, ever with you, sending all me love. We've got a lost film. I'm back in the room. Um, hi, Jodie. I'm 40 years old and I have many fun memories of films from the 80s. I'm going to have to turn that over. I'm still going. Um, I wonder if Paul's other listener can help me jog my memory about this one. I, I remember it starred the guy who played Fraser's dad. In the film, his father of a, a clever teenage girl who falls for a guy who's not really academic and is more interested in kickboxing. The, the father disapproves of the relationship, but he ends up in prison for a tax evasion. Sounds, sounds quite a good film. So much happens, and I really wanted to see it again, but I can't remember the title or who else was in the film. Please help. And that's from Paula in Western Supermare. Right. OK, can you help Paula? Now, it's a film starring the actor who plays Fraser Crane's dad. The time he leaves his... Uh, the time... This time, he leaves his father, who's a clever girl, and not happy about his daughter's kickboxing new boyfriend, and then he finally ends up being sent to jail for tax evasion. <laughs> I don't think you should watch it again. If, anyway, if you do know, drop us a line. Uh, email in paulogrady at bbc.co.uk. Next, a request for Joyce Button, who lives in Darlington. Hi, Joyce. Oh, thank you so much for your lovely email. And yes, Malcolm can speak. It's just, well, it's just me and Paul. Don't encourage him to. Well, you should hear him when he starts. Anyway, as requested, here's a new one from Teddy Thompson. Well, you and I were meant to be
from his album, Bella. Teddy Thompson there with Delilah. Now, do keep your Father Day messages coming. They're brilliant. So, anyway, it's time for this week's thank yous. This is the part of the show where Paul invites the nation to show a bit of gratitude and thank someone. Last week, Kaylee thanked her mum for helping her with her exams. Hope you did all right, Kaylee. And Mary in Poole thanked her friend Penelope for being such a great help over the years. And Sue thanked all of the staff at Alma. I think it's Alma, not Alma. Well, you say Alma, I'll say Alma. Vets for looking after Felix in the last few days of his precious life. So... Who would you like to thank? There is a certificate of thanks. I can never say that word properly. Signed by Paul if your message is read out on the show. And there's a box of chocolates and a limited edition T-shirt for the very best letter or email of the week. Now we've got a first thank you here. It says, hello, Jodie. Could you please send a thank you over the airways to a very kind young man who helped me at the supermarket in Coventry that rhymes with howdy. I get it, I get it. Oh, I need another coffee. Now, I was having an argument with a shopping trolley. You know how tricky it can be, and it really had a mind of its own. And in my frustration, I left... I thought I'd said, I left my son inside by the checkouts. We've all done it. I left a bag of grapes. I got, I got stressed over that. Now, when I finally managed to load my shopping in the back of the car and return my trolley, I realised I had no idea where Josh was. This young man, whose name I never managed to learn, saw my abject horror and rushed over to tell me that Josh was just fine and was playing in the manager's office. What a relief. Please thank him and all the staff of the shop for looking after my son in a momentary lapse in concentration. Thanks, Jodie, and that's from Sally Ann in Coventry. Sally, I will do. And an imaginary thank you is on its way over the airways to your night in shining supermarket armour. Now we've got one another thank you here from Dana in Hove. Hi, I would really like to thank my good friend Rachel. Recently I split up with my boyfriend of eight years. It all happened pretty suddenly and I was devastated. I thought he was the one, but obviously not. Anyway, Rachel was immediately by my side and invited me to stay at her house in a spare room. She's been my shoulder to cry on and she's helped me to collect all my things and she's helped me to find a lovely one-bedroom flat, which I moved into last week. And I bet you she'll find you a lovely new fellow as well. Now, without Rachel, I don't know how I would have coped. Thanks from Dana and home. Now, I'm so sorry to hear bad news, Dana, and I'm sure things will work out. And yes... An official thank you is in its post to your brilliant friend, Rachel. Oh, and here we have Letter of the Week. Do you know, Malcolm just gets better at playing that trumpet. Well, we've got his face. Oh, it's a face of thunder. Well, we've got one here from Carol Gregory. I would like to thank my boyfriend, Mark Richardson. I've not been well of late, and Mark has collected prescriptions and sick notes, done shopping, cooking, cleaning and ironing, watered my plants, walked my dog and cheered me up when I've been so low because of the pain. We are usually the type of people who love to be out and about, and yet we have to stay in. Mark hasn't complained once, and I am so grateful. Thanks. Carol Gregory in London. Ah, oh, Carol. I, well, I hope you're feeling better. Hopefully one of Paul's T-shirts won't make you have to go into relapse. And I hope your terrific fellow Mark enjoys his chocolates too. Well, remember, let us know if there's someone or somewhere out there that you'd like to say thank you. Here's how. You can contact Paul's show by emailing paulogrady at bbc.co.uk or you can write to Paul at BBC Radio 2, London, W1A, 1AA. Or just visit his show page at bbc.co.uk. Where, where, where has the summer gone? Well, that song still sounds great. And that was the Beatles, as if you needed to tell me to tell you that. Now, more really great music after this. This is the BBC Home Service. Had you heard of Swing in London before you came here? Yes, we had. The children had. What did you expect? I don't rightly know. Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot. I'm Jeremy Vine, and these are the sounds of the 20th century. And it is. The referee looks at his watch. A journey through five decades of popular culture. Any second now. News has just come in that President Kennedy has been shot. Nuclear weapons are so destructive that any sudden change in their deployment may well be regarded as a definite threat to peace. The sounds of the 20th century. Thursday nights from 10 on 88 to 91 FM, BBC Radio 2. Jodie Prenger, in for Paul O'Grady.
Oh, I love that. That was Mike Oldfield and Maggie Riley with Moonlight Shadow. The messages have been coming in and the, they've been brilliant. They really have. We've got one here. Please, can you say Happy Father's Day to my wonderful Daddy Mike on his first Father's Day as he's giving me dinner. Oh, bless. Mummy Becky helped me type this as I'm only 10 months old. And that's from Rosaria Park. I tell you, the kids these days, technology wizards. We've got one here. May I please have a shout out for my dad, Rob. Happy Father's Day. And I hope you're looking forward to dinner tonight. And that's from Matthew Blake. Okay. Another one here. Hi, Jodie. Can you wish my dad Happy Father's Day? John Hollis, who has been helping me tidy up after my sleep over last night. His four girls, girls all love him very much. And that's from Megan, Becky, Lucy and Gemma. Oh, well, that's that's fantastic. Well, it's time for the six o'clock All-Star Triple. You can send in your suggestions to Paul anytime you like. All you need to do is email paulogrady at bbc.co.uk and that's how you do it. And this one has been suggested by Sita, who lives in Chelmsley Wood in the West Midlands. Well, thank you very t very much for taking the time and the trouble to send an email, Sita. And I hope you enjoy the six o'clock triple starring bread. Go. 
There's no one home but you You're all that's left me to And when my love for life is running dry You come and pour yourself on me If a man could be two places at one time I'd be with you Tomorrow and today Beside you all the way If the world should stop with all things Spinning slowly down to die I'd spend And when the world was through, then one by one the stars would all go round. Then you and I would simply fly away. Baby, I'ma need you You're the only one I care enough to hurt about Maybe I'm a crazy But I just can't live without Your love and affection Giving me direction Like a guiding light to help me through my darkest hour Lately I'm a-praying That you'll always be a-staying Beside me Used to be my life was just emotions Passing by Feeling all the while I never really knowing why Thanks to Cita for suggesting that terrific bread all-star triple. Such scrummy songs for a Sunday, it's making me hungry. Well, we kicked off with Make It With You and then we had If and we rounded it off with Baby I'm A Want You. All the details of that and all the music I'm playing today will be available on Paul's show page after seven. And if you'd like to see what I did during that triple, well, just visit the Triple Action Gallery at bbc.co.uk forward slash radio 2. And all I'm going to say is I play a mean chopsticks. Well, up next, a request for Mick in, in Hyde, who's asked for a track from the long lost solo album by Karen Carpenter, recorded in New York back in 1979. And this is Making Love in the Afternoon. <laughs> i 
That was Making Love in the Afternoon. Now, in 1979, Karen Carpenter went to New York to work with the record producer Phil Raymond. Now, they made an album together, but it wasn't released till 1996, 13 years after Karen's tragic day. It was a tragic I love her voice. Well, I'm Jodie, and I'm in for Paul, and it's time for a few more messages. Do keep them coming in. Now, actually, going back to today's lost film, um, you've actually beat me to it. Yeah, da, da. Keep the music going, keep the music going. Now, I was about to say that mo that movie sounds like it, it should stay lost. <laughs> and that, well, Charles, lots of people don't agree because I can now reveal that our lost film was, it was Say Anything, directed by Cameron Crowe. Now, the film was released in 1989 and starred John Cusack, um, Ione Skye, Lily Taylor and John Mahoney. And it's available on DVD. And that's thanks to Jessica Richard, Carol Sue, Mary, Helen, Naomi, Chris, Kirsty, Darren, what a mouthful and everybody else who bothered to text and email with the answers. You still get your texts coming through. That's brilliant. Uh, we've got one here. Hiya, Jodie. Please could you say a huge thank you to our dad, Paul Moran, who, um, who is there for us every single day of our lives. And we don't tell him enough just how much we love him. We love you so much, Pappy. Love from Zoe and Tess. That's lovely, that. Uh, please could you wish my dad a happy Father's Day from me. I love my dad so much. His name is Robert McKee, and that's from Aaron. Oh, it's lovely. I love stuff like that. We've got a dead pet. Why do you do this to me, Martin? You're off. Hi, Jodie. This week we had our cat Truffles put down due to some kidney problems. Truffles would have been two years old in August and the family are completely shocked. It was so unexpected. We miss Truffles so very much and we'll always love him. Of course you will. Could you please play a song that would always cheer us up and that would represent a wonderful cat? All the best and lots of love from the Berniston family. Of course, of course, of course, it will well. To cheer you up, I tell you, there's nothing best than the time for some country. Clinton and Gosport, here we go. Yeah! Hey, pretty baby, are you ready for me? Yeah, it's a good rockin' daddy down from Tennessee. I'm just that off from back from San Antonio with a radio blasting and the bird dog gone. Down. Cause me and my boys got this rig around And we come a thousand miles from a guitar town <laughs> Nothing ever happened around my hometown I ain't kind of just hang around Yeehaw on live radio, Malcolm. Yes, I did. Okay. Do you know I'm going to be committed after this? That was Steve Earl and Guitar Town. And I'll be back, hopefully, if I'm not putting a white jacket, after a plug. 
Let's move this show into second gear, shall we? The Chris Evans Breakfast Show. Trailer loaded and ready to roll. Here's the team helping me bring this super juggernaut of wireless entertainment out of your speaker, wherever that may be. Chris, Johnny, Lynn, Moira and the team. Working here is good for you. It's like having liquid gold pumped into your very being. I can't get enough. Waking up the nation. Weekdays from 6.30. Let me ask him. Come on now. Come on, give me more. I want more. BBC Radio 2. Paul, please. Thank you. It's nine minutes to seven and I'm Jodie in for Paul. Well, do you fancy a cocktail? Well, I could do with one which is handy because it's time for Malcolm's Lethal Recipes. Stop chucking the ice cubes. Well, and today we're having a summer sunshine cocktail. I'm determined to bring some sunshine in. Now, in vain that it will encourage the sun to come out and stay for a bit. All you need to do is just fill a glass with ice. There he goes again. Add a single measure of vodka and some orange juice to nearly fill the glass. Add a splash of summer fruit grenadine to give it some colour. And the best way to do this is just to pour the grenadine over the back of a teaspoon to get the sunrise effect. And there you have it. Your summer sunshine cocktail. A perfect refreshing summer cocktail. But should you attempt this recipe for a summer sunshine, please remember to drink responsibly. was living it up and I hope you have been performed by Bert Kemfoot and his orchestra and you can see the recipe for this week's summer sunshine cocktail on Paul's homepage if you dare St Malcolm will you stop chucking well, uh, well I'll say no more I'll have him after well we've got time for some more of your messages um oh here we go I'm a dad doing all the washing up for my family who is celebrating my son's 21st in the other room happy father's day huh <laughs> And that's from Keith in Amersham. And we've also got, hi here, we would like to wish you Happy Father's Day to our dad, Trevor Howard, please. And that's from Mark, Tracy, Nick and Kerry. We love you. Hi, Jodie, lovely to hear you doing the show again. Oh, thank you. We really enjoyed listening to you last week. Could you please say hello to my husband, Keith, on Father's Day? And a special hello to my dad, Harold Walker. Look forward to hearing you again soon. Oh, thank you. And that's from Catherine Walker. We've got one here. Hi, Jodie, please wish my dad, Dave, who's currently driving me back from my nans a happy father's day as he is the best dad in the entire world and that's from claire could you please say a happy father's day to our dad neil and thank him for being an amazing dad for a fabulous day at Mottisfont abbey 
early today. I think I've got... Do you know, I'm no good at me spellings, me. Thank you very, very much. And that's from Anna, Amy and Yvette. Um, I would like to say happy Father's Day to my dad, Martin Cubbert. Have a fantastic day. And that's from Sarah. We've got one here. Hi, Jodie. Could you please say a massive happy Father's Day to my dad, Richard Burton? I live in Leeds and go and see my parents who live in Stonehaven as much as possible. I'm 42 and I'm still a daddy's girl. I'm very proud of it. And so you should. He's also at the ripe age of 60 and just to become a granddad to Ella Louise and he's, a, he's proud as punch. Love the show. Listen every week and you're doing an excellent job. And oh, when covering for Paul, thank you very much. And that's from Joanne and David and Leeds. Now I have to say it is Father's Day. And Dad, if you're listening, me and Marco love you the world twice over. Well, it's time for the last one today. And if you're listening, last Sunday you'll know that Paul's left me instructions to ensure I give you a happy ending and this is one for sure When I leave your door When we say goodnight it hurts me more and more Girl, it just ain't right to end a day like this With no more than a kiss Spend the night just dreaming of the things we're gonna miss If I had my way Girl, we'd be together more and more each day We'd go on forever, lovers hand in hand Can't you understand? Girl, you've got to be my woman, I've got to be your man I need you more this day The way I feel about you Leaves nothing more to say Cause I love you Girl, I need you And I can't get by without you No way It's a sad affair Wasting precious time that you and I could share Girl, it's such a crime to hear you call my name It's a crying shame When we're not together, then there's only time to play There will come a day Girl, I do believe it's not too far away When I can say goodnight and still be by your side Cry the tears you cry And I'll have all the love I need To keep me satisfied Cause I can't get by without you I need you more each day The way I feel about you Leaves nothing more to say Cause I love you Girl, I need you And I can't get by without you No way Well, that was our hands clapping, foot tapping, happy ending. That's all, folks. Now, I hope you've really enjoyed the music. Now, do keep in touch. We are nothing without you and your messages. Here's Maria with Paul's contact details. You can contact Paul's show by emailing paulogrady at bbc.co.uk or you can write to Paul at BBC Radio 2, London, W1A, 1AA. Or just visit his show page at bbc.co.uk slash radio 2 and click on Take Part in the Show. Thanks to the team and to my producer, Malcolm Prince. I love you. But most of all, thanks to you for your company. I've had such a lovely time. Now, Paul is back next Sunday. Alan Titchmarsh is next. I've loved being here today. Thank you so much, and I hope you've had a great time. I'm Jodie Prenger, and this is BBC Radio 2, online, on digital, and on 88 to 91 FM. BBC News at 7 o'clock, this is Tom Sanders. NATO has said it will take some time to establish whether its planes bombed a residential area of Tripoli last night, killing seven civilians. A spokesman said the alliance deeply regretted any loss of civilian life. 
Opposition activists in Syria say they formed a national council against the regime in Damascus. A spokesman said the body would lead to what he called the revolution and would be made up of political forces inside and outside the country. Here, the Chief Secretary to the Treasury, Danny Alexander, has insisted he's not trying to provoke a battle with the unions. The charge was made by the Shadow Chancellor, Ed Balls, who urged the unions not to fall into the government trap of strengthening